What's up and welcome to the 2024 HVAC Buyer's Guide. In this video, we're gonna tell you everything you need to know to pick out the best HVAC for your home in 2024. We're gonna be talking about new technology that's out there. We're gonna be covering furnaces. We're going to be covering heat pumps and we're going to be covering air conditioners as well as some of the nuances to consider and how you can get the best HVAC for your home. And if you're tuning into this channel for the first time and haven't done so already, please consider subscribing. It's a great way that you can show support if you get value from this content and make sure you smash that like button for the outcome algorithm. It's a free way you can show your support and it is much appreciated. So that being said, let's start off by talking about the types of furnaces that are on the market in 2024 and what you need to know. Now, not much has changed in terms of furnace technology. Most of the furnaces that are out there this year are the same as what's been out for, you know, the past five, 10 years. There has only been maybe moderate improvements or a few changes to some of the features and updates to individual pieces of technology. So I'm going to go through kind of the plethora and the range of types of furnaces available so you have that in your back pocket when making your decision. Now, the first type of furnace is a basic single stage 80% efficient furnace. The second type of furnace is a two stage variable speed 80% efficient furnace. Now, there's basically two categories of furnaces, so I'm gonna take a, a pause right here. And there's also some new laws that have come out, which I'll touch on later in this video. I'm not gonna touch on that right now, but there's basically two types of furnace. One is a high efficiency or condensing gas furnace. So when I use the term 96% efficient furnace, that is a condensing gas furnace. And when I use the term 80% efficient furnace, that is a standard furnace. When I say single stage or two stage, what that means is how many stages of heating a system has. So a single stage system is either on or it's off, whereas a two stage system, when it first kicks on, it kicks on at half capacity in first stage. And then after a ramp up period, normally it's five or 10 minutes, depending on how you set and commission the system when you install it, it will then kick in to second stage heat if it still has not satisfied temperature on the thermostat. And the benefit of this is this reduces wear and tear on the system. And it's also a comfort option because the system is quieter when it first kicks on. And in general, you are gonna get a little bit of an efficiency savings. But the truth is the biggest reason you choose a two stage system over a single stage system is all about comfort. Now, when it comes to 96% efficient systems, they have the same options and then they have an even higher one. Now they have 96% single stage systems, just like the 80% efficient single stage system. So this is a more efficient furnace, but it still is either on or off. So it's just a basic system, but it's a little bit more efficient in terms of how it turns gas into heat. A two-stage system, same thing. This is a comfort option. And in the high efficiency furnace space, the most efficient options are typically 97 or 98% efficient. These are systems like the DM97MC. That is a Daikin high efficiency furnace that is 97 or 98% efficient. And that type of system is what's called a modulating system. Now, the biggest benefit to a modulating system is all about comfort because they are the quietest types of systems. When they first kick on, they are very quiet because they are ramping up and down along a continuum, whereas a single stage or a two stage system still comes on at a fairly high capacity when it first starts. The single stage is on 100% capacity and the two stage system is still on at 50% capacity, whereas a modulating system typically has a 80 or 90% turn down ratio, meaning that when it first kicks on, it can be coming on at 10% or 20% capacity by comparison, and then it ramps up and down on a variable speed basis. Now that's all I want to touch on in this video on furnaces. We have several other videos on our channel that talk about high efficiency technology and what the difference is between it and an 80% efficient furnace. But the bottom line is that if you want something that is the most reliable and not going to cause problems, a basic single stage 80% efficient furnace is typically the most reliable product. This is why we put these in rentals. And the reason we do this is because tenants don't complain when their heat goes out. And also tenants don't take care of the HVAC equipment. They don't take care of the property as if it was their own because it's not their own. It's your property. And if for our owner occupied properties, so if you're buying something for your personal residence and you're good about changing your filter on a regular basis and maintaining it, and you do things to take care of your system, or you have a technician come out once a year for annual maintenance, then it's not a bad idea to get a high efficiency system, especially because you're going to be benefiting from the efficiency savings in addition to rebates. They are more expensive to maintain. So we do always point that out to people that it is something to consider that you are going to have annual maintenance on this just to make sure that it's running 
efficiently. If you are a do-it-yourselfer, one thing that you can do to make sure, this is the, the one problem that happens on a pretty consistent basis. Whenever we're having a callback after, let's say, three or four years, it's the condensate drains clog on high-efficiency systems. It's just something that happens, but it has nothing to do with installation air. It's just something that happens, and then this backs up the condensate drain. And so this is why, when you're having annual maintenance done, this is a basic wear item that is like a cleaning item, and this is something that we do when we're out there on a high-efficiency system. So if you're comfortable doing that on your own, then a high, and you do all your own maintenance, then a high efficiency is fine. But for people that really want something that's reliable or they don't have a very high energy bill, for example, if your energy bill is $100, $150 a month or less for heating, you might not benefit from going with a high efficiency system. But if it's more than that, oftentimes there will be a savings over time, especially as gas gets more expensive. But those are kind of the nutshell comparisons of what you should think about when choosing the best furnace for your home. Now, when it comes to air conditioners, you have a lot of the same technology out there, but it's broken down into essentially three categories. You have single stage air conditioners, you have multi-stage air conditioners, and you have inverter air conditioners like the Daikin Fit. Now, typically when we're giving a bid, we typically recommend either a single stage air conditioner or we recommend a inverter air conditioner like the Daikin Fit. And the reason is in the way that we price things and the way that our equipment is currently priced in terms of what, what we have to pay for it, the multi-stage systems and the inverter product that I just mentioned, the Daikin Fit, are basically neck and neck in terms of price. And as a result, we are always recommending the Daikin Fit because it is a much better option than a multi-stage system for most applications. So there's not really any applications where we would put in a two-stage system over the Daikin Fit. And so therefore, those are kind of the two types of recommendations that we offer. They work the same way you would think a, you know, a two-stage furnace works where you have staged capacity. And then the difference with the inverter, the inverter ramps up and down on a continuum. And if you're curious to see one of these in action, I'll make sure to link a video that talks about the Daikin Fit because we actually show this in action and I hook up meters and amp clamps so you can actually see the amp draw on the system in action and see what we're talking about when we talk about how low the actual amount of electricity it uses is on startup because that's actually the biggest benefit is going to be efficiency savings but from a comfort perspective the biggest benefit with an inverter like the Daikin Fit is quiet. When it first comes on it is whisper quiet. A lot of these things will come on at 30, 40 decibels and when they're ramping up to max capacity might put out somewhere around 50 to 55 decibels. And that means that it could be in this room and it could first kick on. And when that fan first starts spinning, you're not really gonna hear it or you might barely hear it and notice it. It's something where every time we do a startup on a Daikin Fit, the customers are always so wowed and very happy that they splurged and spent the extra money to get the Daikin Fit because it is a much quieter system. This is especially true for people that have their air conditioner installed close to a patio outside. So if you're ever spending time outside in the summer and your air conditioner happens to kick on. This is something where it's going to be much less annoying and you're not really going to notice it. And that's why people love the Daikin Fit. Now, a lot of these products I just mentioned, they will qualify for rebates. At least, for example, currently in the Phoenix market, SRP offers a rebate on single stage, multi-stage and inverter products. And it actually offers the highest rebate on the inverter line. It's $225 per ton of cooling. And there's going to be similar rebates like this throughout the US. So across the board in municipality, there should be different rebates. Some municipalities are going to have grant programs available. So you just have to look into that because it's going to vary widely by state and region. But that is something to consider when looking at this. And a local contractor is going to be able to help you walk through that process because this varies widely across the nation from municipality to municipality. Now, the next type of system we're going to talk about is heat pumps. Now, we talk about a lot of heat pumps on this channel. We're a huge fan of heat pumps. I personally love installing heat pumps. And there's a lot of myths out there about heat pumps. One such myth is that heat pumps don't work well in cold weather. You might have heard this or you might have had a contractor tell you this. I've even had vendors tell me this and I've thought to myself, well, maybe your heat pumps don't work well in cold weather, but the ones we install do. So maybe your heat pump product isn't the best product for us, but heat pumps do work in cold weather, but that's to a point, right? If you live in a climate where it's negative 20 degrees Fahrenheit, negative 10 degrees Fahrenheit or colder for extended periods of time, a heat pump is definitely going to have a hard time keeping up. There are certain models out there that will do it, but the efficiency starts to drop when the 
temperature gets that low. And so we install a lot of heat pumps in Colorado because one of the benefits of heat pump technology is that the cold climate heat pumps we install here qualify for rebates sometimes. They qualify for a tax credit. They don't qualify for a local rebate for a reason that I'll talk about in another video. This has to do with nuances with the EER ratings. But the bottom line is that heat pumps are a great option. And if you live in a cold climate, one of the things that we install a lot of is what's called dual fuel heat pumps. Now, dual fuel just means that you have a furnace instead of an air handler with electric heat. And so as a result, you have a condenser outside, you have an air handler, and then that would normally make up your heat pump application is basically you have a condenser and it's connected to an air handler. Well, when we do a dual fuel setup, instead of setting it up with an air handler, we instead put in an evaporator coil and pair that with a furnace. And we stage this the equipment in a way to where we set what's called the changeover or the switchover temperature, which is the temperature at which it's gonna be more efficient to run a furnace instead of running your heat pump. And our customers that have solar panels absolutely love these types of setups because there is normally two, three, maybe four nights out of the year where a heat pump won't keep up in Denver metro area or Colorado Springs. But the rest of the time, it's pretty sunny and moderate, right? Our lows might get down to 10 or 20 degrees Fahrenheit in the coldest months and the highs get up to, you know, 30 or 40 degrees Fahrenheit. And again, that will vary a little bit where we'll have some colder temperature outliers. For example, a few weeks ago, it got down into the single digits and negative digits. We had negative 15, I think was the coldest night one weekend or so far this year. And so in those instances, what happens is the furnace kicks in. And again, we talk about this in another video on this channel that I'll make sure to link for your convenience. But the bottom line is we love dual fuel heat pumps because you're able to capitalize on heat pump technology, heat your home for a much more efficient and oftentimes cheaper price. And then in those circumstances where you need a furnace to keep up on very, very cold nights, you have that available, but you're not having to heat with your furnace year round. And we literally have customers that have completely gotten rid of their gas bill or got gotten rid of their electric bill, they're still connected to the grid. So they still have a gas bill when they use it, but their solar production can often offset that where they don't have a bill anymore. And they're basically able to heat their home without a utility bill in the winter, which is pretty nice, especially because in recent years, gas prices got pretty expensive. And when I say gas prices, I'm referring to natural gas prices. And a lot of people in Denver were complaining about, well, people nationwide were complaining about the cost to heat their home in the winter. And now I'm going to talk about the Inflation Reduction Act and some of the heat pump tax credits that are out there as well as appliance tax credits that are available. But before we do that, if you haven't done so already, please make sure you smash that like button for the algorithm. It's a free way that you can show your support. And again, consider subscribing if you're enjoying this content so far. It is much appreciated. We definitely value our subscribers and we want to put out content that is relevant to you. So if you found this content helpful so far too, and you or you still have outstanding questions, please feel free to post a comment in the comment section below letting us know what you think because we do read and respond to as many comments as possible and want to use that information to make sure that we're putting out relevant content for you. Now, the Inflation Reduction Act, which was recently passed, has a few provisions in there for appliances as it relates to HVAC, and so we'll talk about what that is. Now, the heat pump tax credit was basically that's allowed is 30% of installation costs, but it is capped at 30, a certain amount annually. So for air conditioners, it's $600. For heat pumps, it's $2,000. And for furnaces, it's $600. Now this is a tax credit. So you're gonna have to qualify it for this. Unfortunately, they put income limitations on this. So you're gonna wanna talk to your CPA about that. I believe on the high end, it was 300,000 household income. So you're gonna wanna talk to your CPA when you are filing or looking that up. But bottom line is most people will be able to qualify for these tax credits. Credits, but there are some nuances that you want to navigate. So for heat pumps to qualify, they do have to be cold climate certified. Some of the products out there like the Daikin Fit Enhanced that I've mentioned earlier, that heat pump does qualify, but not all heat pumps will. So you want to make sure that the equipment you're putting in does qualify. There's a long list of products that qualify. So your contractor should be familiar and know what they're offering and whether or not it does qualify. Now, in addition to the Inflation Reduction Act, there was a new law passed in Colorado recently and some more laws like this have been introduced in other states and, and you'll start to see this happen. But I'm going to talk about that briefly because on the furnace note, it does affect your purchase or it can affect your purchasing decision. Because if you're one of the people that's just kind of waiting until things break before you make a decision, if you're in Colorado and you're wanting to get an 80% efficient furnace and you're not really wanting to get a 96% or a high efficiency furnace, you're going to want to take advantage of that in the next few years. Because as of 2026, a law that was recently passed in 
the Colorado state legislation is basically outlawing 80% efficient furnaces. And so you would have to put in a high efficiency condensing gas furnace. And there's a lot of reasons why this is more complicated than just putting in a new furnace. You have to run exhaust venting. If you have a finished basement, this can be a major pain. And if you're talking about doing this in a condo with existing walls, there might not be anywhere to run the exhaust venting. And especially in a condo, the HOA association doesn't just let you run pipes or cut holes in the side of the building in random spots. So all this stuff has to be pre-approved by the HOA. So if they started mandating putting in high efficiency furnaces, it was something that, although I understand where they're coming from in terms of wanting to push people towards using greener products, the bottom line is that forcing people to do it, especially in instances when you can't do it, because there's condos and things we run into all the time where there's not a way to run high efficiency venting, right now is going to be the time that you want to take advantage of getting that 80% efficient furnace. And the other reason that we put in a lot of 80% efficient furnaces is when we're doing dual fuel heat pump applications. The reason is, is if your furnace is only running one or two nights out of the year, why do you need to put in a high efficiency furnace? The short answer is you don't because your heat pump is running the majority of the time and your furnace is only kicking on on those one or two cold nights that it really comes into play where you need that backup heat. And the last thing I want to talk about when it comes to HVAC for your home is brands. Now, our recommendation when it comes to brand, obviously we sell Daikin and so our favorite brand is Daikin. We also sell Mitsubishi, so we like Mitsubishi too. But the bottom line is when you talk to a contractor, they're going to be telling you whatever brand they sell is the best, or they're going to be telling you that whatever brand they offer is what they recommend. And they're going to have a variety of reasons to support that. The reason that we sell Daikin is they have the best warranty in the industry at 12 years parts. They also have a compressor guarantee warranty that is either six years or 12 years, which means if the compressor goes bad, they'll actually give you a brand new unit. Now, the reason that I'm telling you straight out that we sell Daikin and we recommend Daikin. I will also at the same time tell you that brand doesn't really matter. And we talk about this in another video on our channel called The Truth About Brands. And the truth is, is that if we pull apart a Daikin or a train or a carrier and we take a basic single stage air conditioner and we pull it apart and pull out the compressor, the compressor is going to be made by, it's going to be a Copeland scroll compressor, right? That's same made by the same manufacturer and then it's pieced together and assembled by these individual companies. Now, the same is not true for the higher end technology. So once you start getting into any of the inverter boards or any of the multi-stage equipment, they are gonna start having their own uh, proprietary design, proprietary technology incorporated into the design of the systems. But for the most part, what we look for is can we get parts regularly? And that's why when it comes to brand, what we recommend is a big name brand that you recognize or that you've heard of. Some people have never heard of Daikin before and they're like, huh, that's an interesting uh, brand. I've never heard of it. They're actually a massive company and one of the largest domestic manufacturers in North America. They're just newer to the North American market in the past decade. And so that's a reason that people have heard of, let's say, Carrier or Lennox or Train, but they haven't, you know, maybe heard of Daikin or another product. But there's a lot of companies out there. The big thing is as long as it's backed by a major company, because there's going to be private label brands, right? Like every company has its main brand and then it has a private label brand. So for example, if you look at Carrier, Carrier is the main brand that everyone's heard of. They also own Bryant and they also have a brand called Payne, P-A-Y-N-E. And those brands are all essentially, they're made in the same factory. They're made by Carrier and they're just made to different manufacturing design specs a little bit, but there's not much difference between the brand and the bottom line is it's supported by a reputable company that you know, you know you can get parts and that's what's important in our eyes from a technician perspective in choosing a brand. The truth is, is that installation will play more of a role in whether or not a system works and the number one mistake that most people make when they're getting a new system and when I'm talking about the number one installation mistake is oversizing the system. There was a statistic that I read recently in an HVAC R article that was talking about approximately 80% of systems in North America are oversized and it's funny when I was reading that because one of the things that we run into often because we do heat load calculations when we're sizing systems, we size things for the ductwork and we size things for the load on the house because the truth is a good system should run a long time in the middle of winter and in the middle of summer. And the reason is, is because when you get longer run 
one times, if it's taking a while to reach temperature, let's say one or two degrees per hour to reach temperature, the benefit is that your house is not gonna be blasting super cold or blasting super hot because what will happen if you have a system that's oversized is it will overheat and get too hot in certain rooms quickly and it'll still be cold in other rooms. Typically those are gonna be the rooms that are the furthest away from the furnace and then the rooms that are closest to the furnace are blasted with heat because they're directly above the furnace and that's why you want a system that's Goldilocks sized for your house, right? You want the just right perfect size for your house. You don't want bigger is not better in HVAC. You want the just right size. I won't say most contractors make this. I'm just saying the number one mistake that is often made is oversizing a system. So you just wanna be wary of that and make sure you're getting something that's properly sized for your home. And sizing is going to vary widely from region. So the way we size the system in Texas is not the way, the same way that we size the system in Denver, and it's not the same way that we size systems in Phoenix. And so that's something we do have technicians that cross train between different markets, and they see we size things differently in different places because you have to do it based on the load calculation, the duct sizing. You have to account for altitude at Denver, so it can get pretty complex. But the bottom line is a local contractor is going to know how to help you navigate that. And that's the most important thing to consider when sizing your system and getting the best HVAC for your home in 2024. And if you happen to be in one of the areas we service like Denver, Colorado or Phoenix, Arizona, you can actually schedule an appointment with us for free. We come out for free for all first time customers, whether that's for a service call or annual maintenance, or if you're just looking for an estimate for system replacement. And there's actually a link in the description below where you can actually schedule online at your convenience, as well as an up to date list of the cities and states that we service. So you can stay up to date when we start servicing your Metro. And as mentioned earlier, there's a few videos popping up on the screen right now that talk about some of the other heat pumps and air conditioners we mentioned in this video. And we hope you enjoyed this content. Let us know what you think by posting a comment in the comment section below, and we will catch you on the next episode.